All right, let's talk about the rotational inertia integral. We know that the formula says that the inertia is equal to integral r squared dm. But what does this mean, integral r squared dm? To do this, let's take a look at a uniform thin rod. We've got a uniform thin rod of mass m and length l. Let's pick an axis of rotation. I'll go ahead and just pick one right at the center of mass. So it's going to spin, I call it like a, like a propeller. So to find the inertia, we know that it's the sum of the mr squareds. And so I need to take this and I'm going to slice it into little slices. And the mass of each slice is dm. And the thickness of each slice is dl, or I can use any linear position variable like dr to represent the thickness of that slice. And it's located a certain distance away from the axis of rotation. So what I need to do is I need to slice this thing into little pieces and then take the r squared times the mass of each little piece and add them up. So I've run into a slight difficulty here with this integral because I have the integral of r squared dm. In this case, the r is not constant. Each little slice has its own unique r. So r is not constant. But how do I integrate r with respect to mass? Well, you can't really integrate position with respect to mass. So what we need to do is we need to find a relationship between the mass and the position, or between the position and the mass. And we do that by the fact that this is a uniform density. So the uniform density of this rod, uniform density means that no matter what size piece I take, the ratio, in this case, I'm going to look at linear density. In other words, mass divided by length. So the total mass of the rod divided by the total length of the rod will will give you the density of the rod. And that density will be the same no matter what size sample you're looking at. So I could be looking at a really small piece. So m over l, total mass over total length, is equal to my infinitely thin slice here of mass dm over its infinitely thin thickness dr. Because it's uniform density, I know that the total mass over the total length will equal the mass over length for any size piece. So this relationship holds true. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to rearrange this and solve it for dm. So dm is equal to m over l dr. So now I'm going to take this relationship and I'm going to plug it in to my integral r squared m over l dr. Now, if I look at where my axis of rotation is, that is my zero because the r in the integral is measured how far from the axis of rotation. So in this case, if I want to set up this integral, I need to integrate. This is my zero. So my point on the far left is going to be half the length away. And the point on the far right is going to be half the length away. If I picture a number line, if this is a zero, then over here, my coordinate would be negative l over 2. And up here, I'd have positive l over 2. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in here. My beginning point goes on the bottom, and my ending point goes on the top. So I've got negative L over 2 on the bottom and L over 2 on the top. Those are the limits of my integral. So my inertia equals the integral of R squared m over L dr evaluated from negative L over 2 to positive L over 2. Now, m and L here is the total mass and the total length, and that is constant. So that will come out of the integral. like so. Now, integral of r squared dr, I know how to do that. I take the exponent, increase it by 1, divide by new exponent. So that becomes r to the third over 3. So this e becomes, the m over l is still there. And then evaluating the integral, I get r to the third divided by 3. And now I need to evaluate that. And so I do a vertical line here that says I'm, that means I'm going to evaluate it from minus l over 2 to positive l over 2. And when I do it this way, all I need to do is plug in the final value to my function, and then minus plugging in the initial value. So this is going to equal m over l times my final value plugged in, which is l over 2 cubed over 3 minus my initial value, minus l over 2 cubed over 3, like so. Well, l over 2 cubed is l cubed over 8. And when I take L cubed over 8 and I divide by 3, that's the same as multiplying by 1 over 3. So L cubed over 8 times 1 over 3 is L cubed over 24. So this becomes M over L 
times, what I'm left with here is L cubed over 24 minus, and again here I have a negative L cubed over 24. Minus a negative becomes plus a positive, and that becomes L cubed over 24 plus L cubed over 24 is 2L cubed over 24, or L cubed over 12. So I have M over L times L cubed over 12, which is ML squared over 12. That is the inertia of a uniform thin rod with an axis passing through the middle. Now we can use the parallel axis theorem to find the inertia of a rod with an axis passing through the end, but let's, let's go ahead and take this integral. If I have the axis passing through the end instead of through the middle, the only thing that changes in all of this are those limits. So let's go ahead and start with a clean sheet. So here's our clean sheet, and we've got our rod axis through one end, and now we can see that because it is of mass m and length l, uh, the limits would be beginning limit here at zero and ending limit the full length away l. So when I evaluate this, I get m over l, again it's r cubed over three, evaluate from zero to l, that becomes m over l, final value, l cubed over three, minus initial value, zero cubed over three, which becomes m over l, l cubed over three, which is in fact ml squared over three, one third ml squared, just as we expected. And there you go, that's how you use the integration with density to find the rotational inertia.